Okay, welcome to a new episode of Farm Like a Hero, folks. I'm Richard Perkins. Today I'm here with Mikko Kriegels from Grünhartig. I don't know if I've said that correctly. That's a small scale intensive vegetable farm in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, established in 2017. And originally marketing solely to restaurants with the coronavirus outbreak, Mikkels had to quickly pivot his sales strategy, something that I think a lot of producers have been going through this season. So I'm super excited for this episode and to hear about the farm's development as well as the changes in strategies now in this challenging time. So Mikko, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Maybe you can just start by telling us quickly how big the farm is and the crops that you produce there. Yeah, I have about 2,000 square meters. Originally, the first year I started on 1,000. Uh, and I started it as a part-time side project to see how it would work. And then it quickly established into something more, into a full-time project, which it is now. Um, yeah, I started in 2017. And I grew, initially I tried to focus on, uh, on lots of salads mainly. And then I quickly built a greenhouse in the second year, uh, started growing some cherry tomatoes, and then branching off into lots of niche products, uh, edible flowers, herbs. It's quite a diverse farm at the moment. I, uh, this year I included even uh, things like uh, baby leeks and baby carrots and beets, radicchios, so lots of uh, yeah, niche crops, uh, basically adjusting to the demand of the chefs I work with. Mm. Salads are still a big part or were a big part of what I was uh, selling to the restaurants. And now I'm adjusting that, obviously, because I'm marketing to consumers now. So. Just jumping back a step, like, tell us a bit, how did you actually get into farming in the first place? Well, basically, I, I started doing, uh, I started getting interested in permaculture. That was my um, uh, entry, entry point. Uh, really ideal, idealistic uh, young guy trying to... Uh, discovering something new about farming. I didn't really have any gardening experience. So I started doing that. And then at some point I was inspired by uh, all the market gardeners, um, especially in the US. And later I saw your videos as well. Um, but I think it was already farming, uh, or already got started with that. But basically I got inspired. Uh, there was an opening somewhere. Somebody asked like, oh, okay, could you do a herb garden for us? And then the, the wheels start, started turning and I, basically wrote a business plan, tried to put that somewhere on the ground, and then I landed here, and then, yeah, I just grew and grew. So, so you came into it without even a, a business background, or had you run your own business before? Nothing. No, my background is in, uh, in restaurants. I used to work in the service. I did hotel management school. Um, I didn't really like that, so I became a snowboard instructor for uh, about seven, seven seasons, working odd jobs, and then... I got in touch with permaculture. I quit the snowboarding thing because it was very superficial culture and I, something was lacking and then this happened. So it was either this or I would go heavy into psychology or something like that because that's my other interest. Um, but it turned out to be this and I'm really happy with it. Mm, that's interesting journey. And would you say that that you know, exposure to, to the food industry helps in the way that you've then approached restaurants? Maybe you could talk a bit about like, why did you choose to market exclusively to restaurants in the first place? Yeah, um, mainly I started, uh, or my idea was to do restaurants because there's not many small farmers uh, that actually do anything with restaurants. Most of them are CSAs and they uh, market to consumers. Uh, most of them are even self-harvest gardens. There's one or two now that are doing veg boxes as well. Um, but the reason I focus on restaurants because um, in the Netherlands you had a, a movement of the, the forgotten vegetables. I think it's probably everywhere uh, in Europe, but especially in the, in the 90s, there was a big movement of forgotten vegetables of like parsnips uh, and, and scorzonera. They were really banished to the, the poor people food. So nobody actually wanted to eat them anymore because... In, in the Second World War, everybody had that association with, oh, it's, uh, we, we don't want to eat that anymore because that's all mm. we ate in the war. So, uh, but there was uh, the restaurants, the quality restaurants, and the Michelin star restaurants, a couple in the Netherlands, basically brought them back into culinary existence. And restaurants have this innovative aspect or 
at least a, a niche uh, part of them. And because I'm, I was very interested in food forests and permaculture in general, and I, I think there's a lot of perennial crops uh, like the pawpaw, well, you, you probably know them all. all. Um, nobody actually knows them, nobody works with them, but I think the restaurants, they're the, the gateway for these type of crops that be, can be grown very sustainably.